Zimbabwe's leader, President Emerson Mnangagwa, says the country should continue with its development agenda using domestic resources in spite of the burden of sanctions imposed on the country by the United States of America and her Western allies. Our President Mnangagwa made this call earlier today and in his keynote address at the Zimbabwe Economic Development Conference in Victoria Falls. The theme of this year's conference public and the private resource mobilization for sustainable development underscores the need for all of us to explore and expand avenues for accessing, for accessing resources for sustainable socioeconomic development for our country. This further calls on us to generate and indeed accelerate growth through the utilization of our vast human and natural resources endowments in our country, we must meet this obligation in spite of the fact that our country remains under the yoke of illegal sanctions. I'm happy that um, the speakers who have spoken before me have realized that is this even a Zimbabwe's capital, Harare, have been around for almost three decades. Residents have been through it all as they keep yearning for a permanent solution. Our Faith Nyaude gives us more in the following report. Twenty-eight-year-old Tambudzai Marufu is an expecting mother of one. She resides in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. It is a city without a drinking water and millions of people are at their breaking point. There is the risk of a cholera or typhoid epidemic that could potentially infect the entire nation. Daily, she parts with one United States dollar to fetch a 20 liter of water, yet she is only a housewife. Community boreholes, which were sunk under the presidential borehole scheme, were meant to bring relief to residents. But some are taking advantage. They make people pay for their service. For Sandra Chikane, the water shortages keep memories of cholera and typhoid fresh in her mind. Her children are having recurrent bouts of diarrhea. Harare needs about 1,200 megalitres of water daily, but only 302 megalitres are being pumped. On its part, government is committed to increase the number of boroughs in the capital, mobilising funds for water treatment chemicals to bring relief. Chairperson of the National Action Committee on Water, Sanitation and Hygiene, Dr. Anxious Masuka, believes the interventions will resolve the water crisis. Government is therefore resolved that with the immediate effect, government will avail sufficient resources for the immediate purchase of chemicals to last one month. So this will increase supply of treated water from the current 303 megalitres per day to the capacities at Morton Jeffrey and Prince Edward of 520 megalitres a day. Resefiti, Zaka Kosha Sterek, a Kutikana Chita Mining Yedu, Tinema Small Scale Miners, Wakati one day, Gati Koshese Upenu, we moon. Nebutu Penu, Kuka, Tikaruza Upenu, Gana Moon, one Sterek Aka Kosha, Mu Zimbabwe. Chinese fair crumb producer AfroChina, which operates in the, the district, has already offered help with a team of electricians and mining technicians now on site. So we are uh, providing some of the pump and the fuel pump to, to extract the water and some of the uh, jack as well. To, like, because they said there are a huge stone down there. So we're trying to help them to rescue the rest of the lights. 
survivors, Trevor Murombezi narrated the ordeal.